the last time we spoke with you, obviously volumes were up, particularly residential volumes as people were working from home and so on, and commercial volumes were down. How has that progressed through the pandemic? Great question. So what we've seen is on the residential side of the business, we've seen revenues uh, or volumes kind of moderate. So mo volumes are still up 8 or 9 percent in the residential space. And uh, we'll address that through, uh, you know, ongoing contract negotiations with customers if they stay elevated. The great news is on the small container side or small business side, we've seen a sequential improvement in volume. So month by month, we're seeing more and more waste in the containers, which means people are finding a way to go back to work. You know, that speaks very positively to consumer demand, consumption. Waste generation is a great bellwether for what's going on in the economy. So we're, we're very pleased with the, the continued improvement in container weights. How did you manage contracts? Have you changed contracts with city, states, municipalities, and even corporations? And, and will that need to change again now if, if the economy does continue to reopen? Well, look, we've had very good success with negotiating with uh, large customers, specifically municipalities, to deal with things like inequity and in recycling and um, an unfair arrangement on escalator due to, you know, CPI being no longer a, a great placeholder. So uh, we've, we've reported again this quarter that we've made uh, continued success in moving uh, those contracts into a fair and favorable position. We'll do the same thing if container weights stay elevated. So uh, we've got high confidence there. You know, the company posted a great quarter. We, uh, as you said, reinstituted our cash flow guidance of 1.1 to 1.175 billion, which within the range of our original guidance we gave back in February pre-COVID. Uh, the board approved the 5% dividend uh, which is our 16th year in a row that we've raised the dividend. Uh, it really shows the strength and stability, resiliency of, of the business and the business model. And we're on track to uh, continue to serve customers. Our people are showing up every day, doing a great job. Things like safety and productivity are great stories for us. There's just a lot of good news here in the quarter. And sure. um, I think there's a lot of resiliency in American business. Well, Don, you know, obviously we showed it there. You operate in 41 states and Puerto Rico. You're basically nationwide. And as the U.S. plays whack-a-mole with the coronavirus, how have you had to adapt in the various states that have closed down or reopened or closed again? Well, you know, our, our people are, are, are uh, used to uh, uh, grinding it out every day, right? The service we provide is, is, uh, is a day-in and day-out essential business. And so they're conditioned to show up every day. They did that through the pandemic uh, and continue to do it. We put our safety of our people foremost ahead of everything else. The one thing when we always talk about, frankly, is the power of our portfolio. So while things may be heating up in, in one state, they may be cooling down in another. They may be heating up in one large city, but some of the rural areas are less affected. And so the power of that portfolio, the business mix we have, tends to sort of carry the day for us. And, uh, you know, local economies, don't necessarily concern us because, again, the power of the portfolio tends to uh, you know, pay dividends, so to speak. And, and we saw that through the pandemic. We'll see that through the year. Obviously, things like personal protective equipment and so on would be very important in your line of work. You already be pretty expert on things like disinfecting, I'm sure. How have you found dealing with the pandemic? How have costs increased? And what have workers been looking for? Well, look, we spent about $31 million in a quarter on, uh, on direct COVID costs. Those are things like uh, extra cleaning of trucks, uh, facilities, uh, masks, uh, those kind of things, but also taking care of our people. We did a gift card program where we put an additional $50 a week um, in people's pockets uh, for a couple of months. We, um, we fed them. We uh, encouraged them to spend those gift cards with local, with local customers, so we did kind of our own little... Uh, a version of, uh, of of helping the local economy and giving them a boost. Uh, so some of those costs will continue. We're going to continue to uh, have escalated costs with uh, with cleaning facilities and trucks and those kind of things. Again, our people are used to working in a regulated environment. We're used to working in uh, in and around uh, uh, a compliant uh, situation with you know PP and safety. And so they've adapted just great. And again, remember most of our drivers and frontline people work alone. And so. Uh, Keeping them six feet apart, social distance hasn't really been a problem for us. 
Now, you obviously employ upwards of 35,000 people, and I'm sure you can bring on people at very short notice when you need to. How has your labour force changed pre, during, and, you know, looking to post-COVID? Do you imagine that there will be layoffs in any sense or, you know, an effort to consolidate costs or anything like that going forward, as most other corporations are doing? Well, look, we have about 28,000 of those 36,000 employees are frontline, and so those are, you know, uh, those are drivers, those are uh, technicians, those are people that, that, that can't work from home. They've got to go out and get it done every day, and uh, they've done a great job. The people that um, work in support uh, capacity in our business, we've done a great job of moving them to working from home. So our, our customer service centers, our accounting people, uh, all working from home today. Uh, we have a, just a skeleton crew, frankly, at headquarters, and, uh, and we're talking about how we'll bring those people back. Um, you know, we're going to play it by ear. Uh, our president, John Henderak, likes to say there's no, there's no uh, prize for being first. So we are going to uh, learn from everybody else. Uh, the good news is, you know, we're closing all the books. We're, we're collecting uh, all the receivables. We're paying all the vendors. We're, we're getting payroll out. We're doing all the things we need to do, and we're doing it remotely and virtually. And we've learned a lot about how we can do business better. And I think some of those uh, efficiencies are going to carry through into the future. So, uh, again, yep. that's all upside for us, we think. Don, who's accepting our trash these days? China certainly isn't as amenable anymore. Yes, yeah, so recycling um, is, is, is what you're referring to, I believe. And so, you know, we, we handle over 110 million tons of trash annually. Uh, you know, close to 10 percent of that is diverted from landfills. Uh, a large percentage of that is recycling. Uh, most of that recycling is paper fiber. But we bring very little, uh, less than 1 percent of our recycling to China, virtually none. And uh, we, uh, frankly, bring uh, the, the majority of our recyclables to stay domestic. And so we've done a great job with uh, China's uh, change in, uh, in contamination levels and so forth with uh, keeping that uh, material moving, getting it collected efficiently and recycling ethically. And so we found great outlets. Um, you know, if, if China uh, opens the doors to more recycling, if they want to continue to uh, pay more for material, you know, then we'll, yeah. we'll take a look at that again. Right now, the prices for recycling are escalated because all the demand for paper products, things yeah. like sanitizing wipes and paper towels. And so we're taking uh, advantage of that as well.